Okay, <clears throat> let's uh, go back to our meeting uh, in the executive session session we discussed uh so i'm gonna cut you off here so executive session uh you're not uh it's an executive session so you don't uh, discuss what was discussed in executive session okay um so where were we before we went into executive session we were discussing uh the presentation of marianne uh barentine uh marianne do you have that uh, presentation Okay, and specifically, we were discussing uh, the the current methods of determining either market value or uh, tax assessed value or, or taxable value. Yeah, we're discussing how the assessments were calculated. Um, in the interest of fairness and equity, I would uh, offer a motion that we uh, recommend using uh, market value in our formula for uh, benefits rather than uh, uh, taxable value. Do I hear a second? Second it. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Uh, First, uh, uh, Garrett, are you, you're the chair? Yes. Okay, so motion can't come from the chair. So uh, uh, is there anyone else who would be interested in making this motion? I would make the motion that we recommend to the county commissioners use of the assessor's interpretation of market value rather than taxable value when determining assessments for the flood control district. So the motion is uh, a recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners of Spokane County that they consider um, using market value here rather than the tax value. Is that the motion? Yes. Okay. Uh, and also, from a, a legal perspective, this is made pursuant to RCW 86.09.409, says as an independent and alternative method to any other method herein authorized and subject to the prior written approval of the county legislative authority, which would be the Board of County Commissioners of the county with which the major portion of the district is situated, the ratio of benefits herein mentioned may be determined in relation to the relative values of the benefit lands, including any improvements thereon and the same shall be expressed in a relative percentage basis. Sir, you want to second the motion? Um, I'd like some discussion. We will after the second. Well, after the second? You yeah. can discuss it. You can definitely discuss it before. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I, th I think it may be worthwhile to um, say to them that we think this is the right thing to do because we think it's more fair. That's basically the reasoning, yes. The reasoning for the motion. Yes. What do you guys think? Well, I obviously agree that it's more fair and equitable. I think it's more fair because your current use or taxable values are based on a tax savings enjoyed by the current property owners now. But if that use went out of favor or went away from a current use, the property owners are subject to the back tax calculation, which is the difference between current use and, and market value for the last seven years or, or thereabouts. And, and so essentially the, the district can't go back and collect that money later um, if the property owner decides to take it out of the tax or the current use program. So I think it's important and more reflective of the benefit received is more reflective of the market value versus taxable value. Larry, second? Well, second. 
Uh, and so you can reopen this since there's a second, you can open it up for discussion. Uh, has there been any input from the community regarding the valuations of market value to or using tax value? Yes, there has. And you um, might want to elaborate on what community input, what, what, consider, what factors are you considering here in making this request to the Board of County Commissioners? And my motion was also based on uh, public input from different people regarding which value should be used. And I think it was reflected that market value from their perspective would be more appropriate as well. And, and why is that? I believe it's just more fairly represents the actual value of the property, the value at which somebody would likely sell their property, and not the value at which, which they're taxed for a tax advantage purpose. The, the state has made a decision to um, give certain property uses a discount in, in property taxes. And there's no correlation between the decision to do that and an equal distribution of the benefits um, at Newman Lake. Um, you know, another option for you, I, I do see that one attendee is raising their hand. Uh, you know, it, it may be helpful to, uh, if, if this board wanted to entertain this at this time, you know, to um, take comment uh, from anyone who would want to comment on it as well, if you wanted any additional input. Um, I'm getting an update that's scheduled later, but, uh, but we could do it now um, if this is uh, a hot topic, uh, but uh, this would be up to, up to you guys. Let Jessica go ahead and uh, comment. I agree. Sure. So the agreement is, is to let uh, people make comments? Yes. Okay. yes. All right. So would the chair uh, recognize uh, those who are wishing to make comments and also those uh, who are wanting to comment uh, who are attending this meeting can raise their hand um, and uh, uh, you will be called on uh, in accord. Yeah. Uh, Chantel can <clears throat> speak right now. Oh, is that... Can you hear me? This is Chantel Balcom. Yes, we can hear you, Chantel. Okay. So on, because this seems to be a hot topic on the current on taxable value versus market value, on the scenario that you guys were working up as far as the um, split value on that issue, for example. So what you're saying, you wanna use market value versus taxable. So in that scenario, it'd be taxed at maybe $54 instead of $34 on this particular issue. Like that parcel from what I calculated, all you guys are in executive session, that's what I'm seeing. But if we are, if you're using market value versus taxable value, does this actually increase the overall amount of money that the Newman Lake flood control will receive or just purely reallocating distribution between property owners? I believe it'll be a reallocation of what the budget is and not an increase. It's not a budget driver. Okay. So the, all the money that we're spending on the Newman Lake flood control is only to reallocate distribution between property owners. And that amount, for example, on that example you're using is literally a $20 difference. If we used market value and we didn't do it, use a split parcel, you only 
you would calculate on market value, but would you remain, or would some of the parcels still be split? Doing a split value calculation or would that go away? Uh, we have a separate discussion over how to treat the split parcel. Okay, so that, that this motion you're making has nothing to do with split parcels? Well, it, it indirectly does because you're going to use the value to multiply it times uh, a, uh, something equivalent to a mill rate. Okay. And so just so I'm clear, this changing from taxable to market value only affects 34 parcels? I don't, I don't, you don't know, know that. Parcels. We were just considering the concept not the individual tax at this point. I think in the um, presentation, if I remember right, she said, I wrote it down. It said 34 parcels are affected or have different market, market value versus taxable value. Is that correct? I, I don't believe that's correct. Um, I think we were talking about uh, uh, the split parcels. But, but this would affect all parcels. You would be using Correct. market value versus taxable value, right? Correct. And so in order to have that calculation or to actually vote on that, what does that mean? I mean, have you ran the numbers or ran an Excel spreadsheet? Like, what does that actually mean to these 34 parcels? What is the difference in calculation? Like when I ran, the calculation on the one that Marianne was doing, it looks like it goes from 34 to $54. So literally we're talking $20. So, okay, maybe we could buy into that as a, you know, taxpayer. But I, I don't know what that means. If you go market value versus taxable value. So the well, reason because, that the tax value Because even though it's taxable is, versus market, I mean, agricultural benefits, we're, our land is fully flooded, for example. My, my recommendation here would be for the board to entertain comment from the public. And uh, if the, the participant can explain what, whether they would be for or against a market, uh, market valuation versus a taxable valuation, and then explain the reasoning. Um, and then if the board would have any questions for the participant, then, uh, then the board may ask a question, but uh, not it, not more of a discussion here. Um, but any input? I, I can answer provide. that very clear. I'm not sure if I'm for or against because I haven't seen any calculations of what does that actually do for taxpayers and for the budget of Newman Lake flood control. You know what what are we doing? What's the net result of this decision? That's my question. I don't know if I'm for or against it. I mean, if, if, if you, as a taxpayer, and you want us to pay a couple hundred dollars more, and that money is going to benefit the lake, yeah, we probably would be in favor of that. But I don't know what the net result is. So your position is, is that more time should be uh, taken in considering this motion? I think we should be able to see, like when you, when you talk about that rent roll, I mean, I think we should be able to see what what that would look like if you if you want to you know make this motion. What does that mean to us as individuals financially? This is just a quick note to the to the board. Um, we we have run some of those numbers in the past, and we could provide that information to you if you were interested. Not today, but um, we could pull something together for your next meeting if you wanted. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Shazelle. Yeah, thank you for listening. Jessica, go ahead. Jessica, can you hear me? Dennis is, is now able to talk. Are you calling on me, Ron? Yep. This is Dennis Rewinkle from Newman Lake. So I'll just make a real quick observation at this point. Um, Larry, Brian, Gary, 
it certainly appears to me that you guys are actually figuring this out. Um, but what I also see is that Casey's going to take you offline in the closet and tell you how you're really going to do it. Um, the calculation and methodology is every bit as critical as the actual benefit classifications themselves, because that ends up in what we actually are assessed. Some of the information that you have been provided today is in fact wrong. There are more than 35 parcels in the assessment area that have a difference between taxable and market. In fact, there are 60, and this uh, list was agreed on between me and Chad Coles just last year. 14 of those are treated to market value and 46 of them are treated as a taxable value. The county assessor's office had said that uh, those reductions due to exemptions were not meant to be used by anybody other than the county um, tax board. So that's where we got our information. I've sent you a personal a parcel listing for all of those that were agreed to, and I would encourage you to check that list yourself. Um, my continued concern is that no one in this group is allowed to communicate anymore with the members of the community that have brought forward to you the petition. So we have no idea what you guys are doing. Again, Gary, guys, it looks like you're figuring it out, so keep it up. I appreciate the time for the comment. Thank you. I appreciate your written comment, Dennis. Uh, a lot of good information in there. Thank you, Gary. Okay, do we have any other comments? Yeah, we have Karen or Tom. Okay, go ahead, Karen or Tom. This is Tom, and I... Well, I, I guess ultimately we have costs related to forestry. So we're making improvements for the state plan. So to have that included seems not fair, frankly. And then I'm looking at another example of somebody who has an exemption and I can't exactly, I don't know why, but their market value is 174 and their taxable is 8260. So they're going to see a significant change by this. Actually, that's the, it, at least in that my calculation. So just I'm doing a rough Marianne, but they're going to go from 569 on a flood control charge to 17 times that on a payment. So not a lot, but still 17 times higher. I see another one that is 180 has a market value of 678 because he has some kind of an exemption for senior or disability. So are those gonna be taken off the table too? Um, in that um, regard, so I think if, if I'm reading that right, it's gonna change significantly for some people. And we're doing forestry to improve our forest. So we're in, the runoff and all the different rules that come with it. So we've gone through a criteria to qualify for forestry. The same people, you know, the same, we have rural exemptions, we have all these different exemptions. So for a variety of reasons. So I, I guess I'm not, I'm not agreeing with the premise of where you're going. Okay, thank you, Tony. Uh, do we have anyone else? Tom, are you still there? Oh, I can bring him back if if you would like. I'd like to understand the costs um, associated with forestry that he's referring to. Maybe a few examples. Well, first we had to apply for a forestry plan. Then we had to hire a forester. Then we have to actually plant and do forestry work to meet that criteria for what the forest is. On top of that, we had to purchase X amount of land because of the way the, the zoning laws were in the state or in the county of which we had to purchase 10 acre parcels. So we're trying to make highest and best use of it, but we're taxed on where we are and we had to purchase this whole big piece of property in order to be where we are. And why did you do that? 
on purchase the property. Why did you purchase more property so you could put it in the forest uh, reserve section? Well, the county required from a zoning standpoint, 10 acre parcels, which has since changed to 20 acre parcels. So I can't even use the land that I have. I basically, yeah, I was forced anyway, to, or to get what we had, we had to purchase way more than what we needed. And so thus we put it into forestry to, to take care of that for us from fire breaks to everything, to planning that it had been logged and nobody had re replanted it. So we, we have to do that. So there's a whole criteria that we have to follow to, to fit the criteria that we're in. Okay, my question would be, what, what does that have to do with flood control or uh, water quality? Well, I would say that's true in general anyway. I don't contribute to <laughs> flood. I don't have a chance of flood. I don't think I'm paying, but nor do I, the water quality, that's, that's a whole nother question. So it's why are 770 paying for 1800 or paying for the whole county. So the whole thing is messed up to begin with. Okay, thank you, Don. Uh, Ron, do we have anybody else? Yeah, we have Shayla next and two more after Shayla. Hi, this is Shayla, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so my question is um, how this will affect people that are in um, tax classifications such as open space or agriculture that are within the flood zone? I mean, will those class tax, th those tax classifications still be in place or will those go away with this redistribute, uh, this reassessment, excuse me? Well, this has nothing to do with taxes. This only has something to do with how the uh, benefits how the expense of associated with Newman Lake is shared by the people around the lake. So but it does have to do, do with, with state taxes or property taxes or any taxes. Okay. I mean, it seems that it would have something to do with taxes if it's affecting our costs that we're paying into taxes though, right? No, so because it's not taxes, part of the taxes. Yeah, your taxes you're paying to the county are based on uh, taxable value, which uh, in the case of the forest or, or senior citizen or other exemption is that taxable value is reduced to a small percentage of the market value. And so what we're saying they're considering is the uh, uh, using the taxable value to make it more fair and equitable or using the market value, I should say, to make it more fair and equitable. So that won't change uh, of the tax classifications if, if it ends up changing to the market value? No, it has nothing to do with taxes. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Next, we have Lori Hess. Hi, can you go ahead, me? Lori? This is Lori Hess. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Good. I just wanted to make a comment, Larry. You had just stated that that is true. It doesn't, in fact, affect our taxes and our category that we're being taxed on. This is strictly just for the assessment that we're paying in Newman Lake, which makes complete sense for you to do it on marketable because at any moment anybody could sell and then you're going to have to reallocate all of the funds that have been distributed per parcel and so these people that are getting tax breaks are not paying a higher assessment but in turn they could sell tomorrow once the assessment has been done and now that new owner would not be paying an assessment if i'm correct I, i'm not sure if i'm understanding it correctly but um I'm in real estate and it just kind of makes sense to transfer with the land um, that is around us. So I'm still learning, just trying to figure all of this out, but I just wanted to comment um, that, yeah, it indeed doesn't make any sense to do it on taxable since that is an individual um, item and this is a community assessment. You're living in this community and 
I'm happy to pay the fees, especially if it affects water quality. I'd like to see greater water quality and um, I think everybody would. So if we wanna pay into that, I think people who live here would be happy to do it. We just wanna make sure it's being done appropriately and correctly. And I think all of us would buy into that. So happy to see what's happening and how it's going. So I appreciate your guys' time. Okay, thank you, Lori. You bet. Now we have Matthew. Go ahead, Matthew. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you. Um, I, in looking at what the concerns are, from my perspective, again, you know, fair and equitable. And if we look at what the fees are, some houses, some parcels pay, let's say $100. Some parcels pay over $1,000. So my comment would be for the consideration of an option of simply evening out to the fees, maybe some of the complexity isn't even needed. But in the end, if say everyone pays $250 or, or whatever the right number is, right? But if everyone pays a much more similar amount to each other versus the complex, hey, $99, $1,000, maybe that could be considered as an option too. And maybe maybe there's something I'm missing to it, but that's my comment. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Matthew. That's it, Garrett. Do we have anybody else, Ron? I'm not seeing anyone. Uh, we have Rick Guthrie. Go ahead, Rick. Yes, thanks. Um, this is the first time joining the group, and I'm unclear about what the definition of water quality is. Can you repeat that, please? What's the definition of water quality? Um, you know, I, I'm not a water quality person. I don't know. Okay, I, I apologize. I was thinking of the toxic algae that we just had in the lake this year and how that's going to affect future, I don't know, assessments, I suppose, but also the value of our property from a tax perspective. Is uh, Marianne, is there a place where I can go uh, into the uh, RCW or, or Revised Code of Washington to find a definition of water quality? Rick, uh, this was all discussed in a prior meeting. If you, there's YouTubes of that, maybe that might be the best place to look. I think it was the first meeting this was, this was discussed. Yes, thank you. Hey, thanks, Rick. Is that it, Ron? Yeah, looks like that's it. Okay, we'll close the public comment and we've got a, a motion on the floor. In a second, uh, any discussion by the board? Okay, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, unanimous, we'll make a recommendation to the county commissioners. Thank you. Um, okay, do we have any uh, miscellaneous topics we want to talk about? I'm wondering if we would like to talk about how we treat uh, parcels that are currently split. Or do we want to save that discussion for another time? I'd like to talk about it. I, I think it's important. Um, I'll start out and <laughs> it appears to me that through the RCW that land and improvements should be included. And they should be included relative to the benefit ratio in which they sit. So if you have a lakefront property with an upland component, even though it has one parcel number, the, the assessments should be calculated based on 
the lakefront component and the upland component and where the, the improvement is. So for example, if a lakefront lot has an assessed value of 180,000 and the upland component is only say 20,000, um, the lakefront land component should be based on its part and not the relative area of the whole parcel which appears to be the way that it is now. Um, and the improvement should be included at, at the benefit ratio on which it sits. And it needs to be determined if the assessor tracks that information by property component or if they lump it all together. It looks like the, the line item being fed to the um, flood control district is a single line item where there's one value for land and improvements, yet I think the assessor has data where they break down a lakefront component and an upland component and the calculation be, be made based on those components and not the whole property. By components, you mean the value of the components? Yes. Should be based on value and not by area. Because if you calculate it by area, it seems to me um, it's assessing, or it's yeah, it's assessing the property that all components of land within that parcel are equally weighted, and in fact, that really isn't the way it should be. The lakefront component, in theory, should have a higher unit per acre than an upland component giving all other things being equal. I totally agree. That seems fair and reasonable and um, appropriate to me. It's, I think it's going to take either some work on the flood control district um, side of things or Spokane County Public Works or the assessor to break those components out. Um, but it seems to me like it, it, the resulting, the result will be more fair and equitable than the way it's being done now. So. Yeah, I agree. It, uh, <clears throat> dividing it up by the area really is meaningless, I think, uh, because you take, let's say, uh, the, the total lot Front, uh, waterfront in Upland is valued at two hundred thousand dollars. Well, the waterfront parcel probably is worth one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, but it only is going to make up ten percent of the total area. Uh, and so I think it, there's an inequity there. But I think you're right. It, the uh, the assessor should have two values, although he melds it into one for tax purposes. Well, maybe one of us could uh, work with Mary Ann so that um, to help her figure out how to get the computer to pick out the right numbers. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Agreed. <clears throat> okay. Um, one of the things uh, I've been looking at is rather than all three of us try to uh, assimilate the information on all parcels, we divide it up into three sections where, uh, Larry, you can uh, concentrate on one section, Brian can concentrate on another section, and I can concentrate on the third section. And once we've come up with some ratios, we can uh, present them to each other and make modifications or whatever. But rather than trying to, to uh, identify ratios for the entire thing, uh, I think it'd be easier if we broke them up. And- Well, we as I understand it, there are about 65 of these split parcels 
I'm, not talking, I'm not talking about split parcels. I'm, I'm talking about the entire uh, flood district. So this is a new topic? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, my thought was I would take everything from Star Road to Thompson Creek and concentrate on that. Brian, take everything from the pump house north up to and including Thompson Creek. And Larry, take everything from the pump house south to uh, Star Road. And uh, uh, I think it'd, it'd make the task easier by breaking it up like that. Any well, I can't think of a reason not to. Can somebody think of a reason not to do it? Gary, is, is your thought um, something like this? Um, where we each go through this and then we report back to each other depending why we selected certain ratios for certain parcels in our area? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm in agreement for that. Okay. And these are the benefit ratios? Yeah, both water quality and flood uh, uh, control. Okay. That's a good idea. And uh, quite frankly, uh, just from what I've seen so far, I don't see that there's probably going to be major changes in flood control, but I think there's going to be some changes in uh, water quality. But that, uh, that we can look at when we, after we've uh, made our individual inspections. Okay, do we have any items for the next meeting? And speaking of which, I would like to uh, get some public comment on the benefits for both flood control and water quality that are out there. What are the perceived benefits to the to the whole flood control district? Um, and what does the public consider a benefit? Um, I think you know that would be good to review their their input at the next meeting. That's a good idea. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> next meeting we said two weeks. However, I'm not getting back till the ninth and tenth. Eric. Could I have a quick question on what on your last um, decision Pardon? there? How how would you like us to um, help you s solicit that information? Do you want it in writing on the, or do you want to get it verbally also at your next meeting, or what what's your preference on um, on how we do that? I think we can post it on the website. Um... You know, I enjoy hearing from the people because it gives me context. It's like it gives me the flavor or the color or it's, it, it's richer. It's more content. I agree. I agree. More I like, comments, you know, get better. Both ways are, are important. I've seen the emails. I enjoy reading those. And then the actual oral input during the meeting is fine. I, I like that too. <clears throat> okay, next meeting date. Like I say, I'm getting back to the office on the 9th or the 10th, which would be the normal schedule. Kind of out of question for me. So I would suggest uh, the 17th following Wednesday. So does it have to be on a Wednesday? No. And you get big back on what day? The ninth. Well, what do you think about the 11th? Well, after being gone for 10 days, my desk is going to be pretty piled up for a couple okay. of days. That's, that's, that's also, awesome. sorry to interrupt. Week. That's also a Veterans Day county staff. But most of us both not be able to work on that day. 
I, I missed that. County's closed on that day, Gary. On the 11th. The 11th, November 11th is Veterans Day. Uh, most county employees are, are uh, have that day off. The 17th of November? County employees are off on the 17th of November? No, the 11th. Oh, the 11th. Yeah, oh yeah, Veterans Day. Yeah, that's the reason I, I'd say the 17th to uh, give me a chance to get my feet on the ground and uh, clean my desk off and be able to concentrate. And Gary, what's the next, what's is the 24th then the, the original date? Would we want to have one on the 24th as well to get back to our original date? Well, 24th is right before Thanksgiving, day before, and uh, I don't think folks are going to be too anxious to hold up the Thanksgiving trip to work with us. So are you proposing the next one would be on the 1st? The next one would be on 17th of November. And after that would be the 1st? After that would be the first of December, yes. Unless we want to change that date. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, sounds good to me. Me too. Okay, let's schedule for the 17th. And the other items, uh, November 17th and December 1st, correct? Correct. Okay. How do we how do we want to proceed with uh, these components of the lake? Do we need to have a discussion on how we want to go forward? Do we want to use the existing map as a starting point? Um, when do we want to do this? I'd like to hear a little input from people maybe before the next you know meeting or at the next meeting and then start then or you can start it earlier. <clears throat> we take we can take written comments also. You know, um, I didn't write down the the boundaries of the area I'm supposed to focus on. From the pump house south to Star Road. What's the first one? The pump house. That was I'm the, getting it. Um, the pump house. That was the building that uh, where the uh, uh, alum is. Pumped into the lake. Oh, the pump house. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just couldn't get it. I, that's my. Uh, it's my senior years, you know. <laughs> I represent that. <laughs> okay. Okay, we good. Marianne, any comments? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here. It's up to, up to you guys. So um, I think we got what we needed. We'll go ahead and get well, out of. Well, Casey, do they need to make a motion for changing the dates? Yes. I make a motion that we have our next meeting on the 17th and the meeting after that on uh, December 1st. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn. A motion that we adjourn the meeting. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have a good week. All right. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. See you later.